Well, praise God, I figured we'd go ahead and get this live stream started to see if it's going to work this evening. And to try to get everybody's mind off of these movies that makes you cry. <laughs> All right, praise God, praise God. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll go ahead and get our service started. Uh, last account I had... And when I looked at my phone with some of this weather that may be coming in, they said we might have thunderstorms around 7.30. So I don't know. But anyway, I'm glad you're here. Amen? I am glad you're here. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we love you so much and thank you for the opportunity you afford us to be back in your presence. And God, we're so grateful that no matter where we go or what we do, if we'll find seek you, we'll find you. So Lord, I pray that you'll use this... Uh, message this evening and uh, just bless it to our hearts. Bless us as we sing. Uh, have your way in our service for Jesus' sake. Amen and amen. Come on, brother. And good evening. Ready? We'll take a hymn and we'll turn to page 426. <laughs>
Let's continue to pray for those that uh, stand in need of a touch from the Master's hand. Uh, there's so many of our people uh, that needs a touch. I've got a good preacher friend who posted today that his wife has been admitted to the hospital with COVID pneumonia. Uh, our grandchildren's mother's at the hospital now in Tennessee and possibly may be admitted. So uh, be in prayer for them. Uh, continue to pray for Larry Webb. Uh, continue to pray for Philip and his family. Uh, let's continue to remember uh, Pat Sadler, the Macmillans, uh, Vera with some tests that she's got to have done. Uh, anybody else that you know of? Continue to watch over Gwen. Okay. Let's continue to pray for uh, John's daddy and Sue's mama. That God take care of them. Okay, let's pray about school as it starts back. Anybody else? Remember Elizabeth and Becca and Blaine and his parents? Okay. Let's remember this request. Anybody else? Brother Roger, lead us to the throne of grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, I lift up all these concerns tonight. All of the concerns of our heart, oh my God, those that have been verbally raised, Lord, those that are thought and those that are needed. Oh my God, all the requests spoken and unspoken, Lord, you know about. And oh my God, I ask that you place upon your throne of grace, oh my God, and pour out your love and your compassion and your healing, Lord, upon those that need healing. And Lord, continue to watch over our church members as they go through times of strife and trouble, Lord. Brother Philip and his family. Miss Vera and her family, Lord, McMillan family, all of the family, Brother Larry Webb, Almighty God, watch over them all. And bless us, Lord, through this service, and bless the pastor, Almighty God, as he brings your words to us. And I ask, Lord, that you anoint him in a mighty way through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Captain, we'll take him on turn to page 514.
Let me invite you to pick up your copy of God's Word, the precious Holy Bible. Turn with me to the seventh chapter of Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel, chapter 7. And I want us to look at verse 24 as our text verse of Scripture. Mark 7, 24. Notice what the Bible says here. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. The text. But he could not be hid. But he could not be hid. Don't you love the wording of the King James? He could not be hid. I want to bring you a message entitled, Jesus Cannot Be Hid. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We pray, God, about this weather around and about us and ask that you protect not only us, but those around and about us. God, we pray that uh, you would have your way in this text and that you would speak through your servant not only words that would feed our soul, but words that can spill over out into a lost, unconcerned, and dying world. Have your way in this, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This chapter of Scripture contains one message and two miracles. Now the message was to the Pharisees about outward signs of religion while inwardly they were not what they should be. The miracles that you'll find in this particular chapter of Scripture had to do with the healing of the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman and the opening of the ears of a deaf man. It is no wonder. It is no wonder that the Bible says of Jesus, He could not be hid. Now, let's stop and think about that statement for just a moment. He could not be hid at his birth because there was a special star that shined all over the world. At the presentation in the temple, he could not be hid because Simeon made the statement that he had seen the Lord's Christ. He could not be hid at his baptism because a dove from heaven rested on him and the voice of God said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He could not be hid in his earthly ministry because of the uncountless miracles that he performed in his ministry. He could not be hid in his death on the cross because when he died, the sun refused to shine and the moon gave no light whatsoever. He could not be hid at his burial the stone seal couldn't keep him in the grave. Death could not hold him. The grave could not hide him. He came forth alive and is alive forevermore. Whenever I think about this particular text, and I try to think about proper grammar. Uh, this text 
Somebody would say, well, couldn't you say he could not be hidden? <laughs> oh, I was telling my wife today about this text. And she said, you can change the title. I said, no, I can't. I said, because the King James makes it very clear that he could not be hid. And how wonderful it is to know that we serve a God that cannot be hid. Now, there are three things that I want you to notice about this passage of Scripture. First of all, I want to say this to you. He cannot be hid from those who truly seek Him. Amen. He cannot be hid from those who truly seek Him. Now, the Hebrew word for the word seek means to search diligently for. And if you search diligently for Him, guess what? You're going to find him. The prophet Jeremiah made this statement in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Listen to what he said. God is speaking through his man Jeremiah. He said, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all thine heart. You see, we just can't halfway seek Him. We can't just uh, want a little bit of Him. We've got to search for Him with all of our heart. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life that my soul got really weary couple of those times that that happened in our life. God, through the North American Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, sent us to Billy Graham's Cove. And we got to spend some quality time in that sacred place. Now, preacher, why would you call that place sacred? Because it is. There's just something about that place that is indescribable. I've walked into that uh, tabernacle or that great big sanctuary that uh, Ruth Graham designed and uh, I sit there in that uh, church building and really felt the presence of God and it was just a good place to go and uh, to kind of refresh one's soul but our soul gets weary from time to time our heart gets heavy from time to time. And when that happens, usually it's during those times that we begin to seek the Lord. Well, I want you to know that, friend, He won't hide from you. Amen. Now, I didn't necessarily have to go to Billy Graham's Cove to have my soul refreshed, but I'm glad that the North American Mission Board wanted me to. I could have refreshed my soul probably riding my lawnmower around the yard. I have before. But it was good to go to a place like that. And I certainly enjoyed it. Jesus is always waiting for you to make the first move. To make the first move. And when you open the door to your heart... He's always ready to come in. You see, I tell people all the time, and Brother John Gibbs Sr. used to say it this way, God don't make robots. He gives us the choice to make the move. And, and if your heart and your soul gets weary and heavy, if you'll make that move towards seeking the Lord... Friend, He will come unto you. Now we've all faced an hour when we thought that we just couldn't go any further. You ever been there? 
If you haven't been there yet, hold on. You'll get there. We just felt like we couldn't go any further. And we made the statement, I just can't go on. And usually whenever we make a statement like that, following that, we say something like this. I've had enough. I quit. I quit. I can't do this anymore. I remember a time in my life that I threw a Bible on a desk and I looked into the heavens and I said, God, I can't do this anymore. But then the fire of God began to burn in my bones. And I don't know of anything else that I could do because of the fire of God. And, and friend, whenever you think that you can't go any further, you need to stop and remember the cross. Amen. You need to stop and remember the cross. You see, that's where we really met Jesus, if you want me to tell you the truth. It was there at the cross that I first saw the light. And it was there that my burdens began to be rolled away at the cross. At the cross where my Savior died. And friend, whenever you feel like you can't go on anymore, you need to stop and think about what if he had felt that way. Boy, I'm glad he didn't quit. I'm glad that he went all the way to the cross and he loved us so much that he died there. Every believer, listen, every believer who seeks Him will find Him. And I love what the author of Hebrews says. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, a portion of that scripture makes it very clear. God says to us, I will never leave thee. Did you hear that? Well, that ought to make a Baptist shout right there. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Friend, I'm going to tell you something. That's exciting to know that we serve a God that won't ever leave us. How many times have, have we walked away? How many times have we tried to distance ourselves from God, but yet God says, I'll never leave you. Have you ever prayed a prayer and it seemed like it couldn't get above the ceiling? And you wondered, God, where are you? Especially if you've been through a storm in your life. And while you're going through the storm, you look and you search and, and you look and you search and, and for some reason you just can't find God. And you say within yourself, God, you said you wouldn't ever leave me. Where are you? And then you get through your storm and years later you look back at that storm and you see that he was there all the time. Amen. And the reason that you couldn't see him when he was there all the time is because you were focused on your storm. The problem with most of us, and we're human beings, is it's so easy to get our eyes on the storm. Now, I'm just as human as the next. And I don't like bad weather. Now, Somebody has said that might be a shiftlet thing. My mother didn't like bad weather. And uh, I can remember as a child crawling under a bed when it got to be bad weather. You can't do that now because they're right down on the floor. But back in those days, they were up off the floor. And boy, if it thundered and lightened too much, boy, shoom, right under that bed I'd go. That's how scared I was of bad weather. And the other day, whenever, I think sometimes with all of this modern technological stuff that they have now, 
They can tell you where the tornado is and tell you you better get in your safe room right now. And the other day, whenever that one hit and was headed out toward Chaserville, I mean, my phone started going off. And then Sue called me and says, you know there's a tornado headed your way. I said, I do. I'm praying right now. And I said in my prayer, God, you said peace be still. And the storm ceased on that sea. I talked to uh, Lamar this morning. And by the way, uh, he got hit by that little tornado. Got hit by it. And a lot of trees. He said when that thing came down, he said he's standing right in the middle of his house. And he said, this is all I can do, Lord. Keep me and my critters safe. <laughs> no, he's got cats. <laughs> Lord, keep me and my critters safe. And he said, no more than I had uttered that prayer out of my mouth. He said, that thing hit the ground, bounced over my house, and hit the trees in my shelter behind the house. And whenever we got the call that it was headed our way, I started praying, God, you say, peace be still. And you can do it again. And before I knew it, they said the storm had dissipated. And I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Too many of us get our eyes on the storms of life. Instead of keeping our focus on God, who is so much bigger than any storm that we'll ever face. So we need to stop telling God how big our storm is and speak to the storm and tell the storm how big our God is. Amen. Secondly, He cannot be hid from those who find Him. He cannot be hid from those who find Him. Now salvation is like the measles. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about whenever I say measles? Anybody in here ever had the measles? You know, I think they vaccinate people for that now. and they, they, it's, it's just about unheard of now, but... Whenever I was a boy growing up, it was very easy to get the measles. And folk knew when you had the measles. Why did they know it? Because you had red spots all over you. Salvation is much like the measles. It breaks out all over you. Did you hear that? It breaks out all over you. Salvation will make you look different. Salvation will make you act different. Salvation will make you talk different. Salvation will make you do different. I've come to the place that I even believe that salvation will make you smell different. Amen? Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul said, therefore, if any be in Christ, they are a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When we get saved by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost of God takes up a boat in our life and the world sees, listen, the world sees that we have been with Jesus. You can't hide Him when He's on the inside. One day the preacher was preaching in the church. 
of how big God really is. And boy, he was waxing rather eloquent in his speech. And he was telling everybody that God was big, a big God. So big that he could oversee this world. So big that he could hold this world in his hand. He was a great big God. And at the end of the service, the, the little uh, girl that was listening to the preacher or the little boy that was listening to the preacher looked up at his mama and said, Mama, if God is so big, how in the world can he live in my tiny heart? Wouldn't he poke out somewhere? Well, glory, I want you to know that yes, he will poke out somewhere. People will be able to see that you've been with Jesus. I'm about to get excited. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. So when we get saved and we get filled with the Holy Ghost of God, you can't hide it because what's on the inside is going to come on the outside. And then thirdly, He cannot be hid even from those who reject Him. One may go through their life unconcerned. Just don't care. Rejecting Him. Never seeking the Lord. Never caring. Don't even care. Doubting that there is a God. But you listen. And you hear me. There will come a time when even those who reject Him shall see Him and acknowledge Him to be Lord. Amen. Now I know some of you are probably saying, Preacher, do you have any Scripture for that? I get that a whole lot sometimes whenever I make statements. Preacher, is there any Bible for that? I'm glad you ask. <laughs> Woo! Over in the book of Philippians, chapter number 2, verses 9 through 11, the Bible tells us that God has given His Son a name that is above every name. And that one day, listen, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, His Father. Amen. It's going to be too late for the unbeliever. Going to cry for the mountains to fall on him. There'll be no hiding place for him that day. He cannot. Jesus cannot be hid. Thank God for a Savior who cannot be hid. When I was a little boy growing up, we didn't have all these tablets. I remember when the first Atari came out. I bought my young'uns one for Christmas. And we were all sitting down in front of the television playing Atari. And I was having a good time with that thing. And my boy says, Daddy, that's ours. That's ours. That's ours. You're going to have to get up now and let us play for a little bit. And on QVC this year, they were advertising some of those old Atari-type games. 
Arabs, space invaders, Pac-Man. Hey, I got excited. I thought Marty might get me one of them. But when I was a boy growing up, we didn't have all of those things. I remember the first, uh, always, listen, we, always, we were always like all the other children. We wanted, uh, back then they were three-wheelers, I think. Now they're four-wheelers. And then uh, they had these little motorbikes that you could get. We always wanted one, but our folks thought that, hey, we get hurt on those things. So they bought us the closest thing that would look like one, the old stallion bicycle. Anybody remember those? I mean, it looked like a motorcycle, but it was a bicycle, and you had to pedal that thing. Granddaddy had terraces on the farm. Boy, we'd ride down in that terrace, and we'd come out on the other side and jump. Boy, we thought we were doing something. That's what we all did in those days. And back in those days, we would play hide and seek. Anybody know what I'm talking about? No, I didn't do it at night. I scared the dark. We'd put our head against a tree and count. One, two. I always did it this way. One, two. One, two. Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you something. He don't play hide and seek. Our God don't play hide and seek. You don't have to play games with God because God is not hiding. He loves you. And He loves you with an everlasting love. And He's waiting with open arms to receive you, to rescue you. No matter how many skeletons that may shake in your closet. No matter how much baggage you may be toting. He's waiting with open arms. With open arms. And I just want you to know that if you need Him, He's not hiding. You can find Him right now. The invitation's never changed. It's still come unto me. Come. Come. There's a lot of things that's changed, but Jesus and His invitation has never changed. It's still come unto me. He can't be hid. Stand with me. Thank you, Father, that you cannot be hid. You do not want to be hid. You want all the world to see and know you. I pray that people will seek you with all their heart. Now we come to a time of commitment and decision. Have your way in what will take place here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah.